What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late Thursday, early evening, late Thursday afternoon, whichever you prefer. The Packers have practiced sans pads, no pads, though usually on Thursdays, uh, traditionally they do work in pads, but as McCarthy pointed out uh, earlier today, uh, per the collective bargaining agreement, they are only allowed three padded practices throughout the last six weeks of the season. He didn't feel that he wanted to use one of those three today, so Packers were without pads. Um, the only real kind of news of significance on the injury front would be that Demarius Randall was added to the injury report uh, with a knee injury. He was limited as a participant uh, this afternoon, which is not great news for a Packers team that obviously has struggled uh, slowing passing attacks down in general. Um, but they were already down Kevin King, who also did not practice today. Um, Randall practiced just on a limited basis. But if they're unable to put King and or Randall out there, um, it could get real, real troublesome in the Packers secondary um, with Devon House, Josh Hawkins, and maybe a Lindsey Pipkins uh, bringing things up there. So obviously a bit yet to play out this week, but that's concerning to say the least. Lynette. Who do we play? Uh, that would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are getting their starting quarterback back. Um, Jameis Winston has missed the last three weeks with a shoulder injury, but he has returned to the lineup this week in practice. And all accounts from Tampa Bay, sounds like he will indeed start on Sunday against the Pack. How confident should Hungley be coming into this game against the Bucks? Well, I'll tell you what. They're actually pretty decent against the run, but they are atrocious against the pass, especially on third down. They have been terrible this year. Now, the hesitancy there is how much do you trust Hundley? And I'm sure Hundley w w can take a lot out of that performance in Pittsburgh, and I'm sure the hope is that he will build on that. I'm sure McCarthy would like him to. But I'm not entirely sure you want to place the game in his hands. I have little doubt that the uh, the Bucks, despite their troubles against the pass, will undoubtedly load up to stop the run and try to make Hundley beat them. That is still probably the best way to approach this Packers offense while Hundley is the quarterback. So... It will be incumbent upon him to make the throws that are there, not to make mistakes. I mean, the biggest thing, you know, he did on Sunday night that he had failed to do the week before was not turn the ball over. Uh, and McCarthy, when asked on Monday about, you know, what was the one big jump from last week to this week, the first thing he said was decision-making. You know, if he takes care of the football, the Packers have a chance to win pretty much any game. But if he's turning the football over, uh, you know, at once or twice, let alone four times as he did against the Ravens, they have no shot. So, um, yeah, that there will be a quandary for McCarthy as he's game planning this week, no doubt. Best place for beers post game in Green Bay? That's a good question, Andrew. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, around the stadium, you can go to Hinterland, which is right across the street, or you can go to uh, Kroll's. Um, there are a bunch of places downtown you can go. I'm sure the denizens here in the comment section will be able to help you out there. This is a must-win to get Rodgers back, right? Pretty much, Gary. I mean, not technically, uh, mathematically, but for the most part, yes. If they want to bring Rodgers back and make it worth their while to have him playing again, they've got to win every game, essentially, which means winning these next two uh, against the Buccaneers and the Browns um, for Rodgers to be you know, even in the conversation. Because he is not eligible to return until that Carolina game. And that Carolina game is not going to be, you know, that's no joke. They have to go down to Carolina, and that is one of the best defenses in the NFL on the road. For you know, Rodgers' first game back, I, I, of course he's Aaron Rodgers, and of course he's still MVP-type quarterback. But to have missed that much time, you got to expect him to be rusty. So that will be a tough environment for him to come back into. Uh, but none of that means anything if the Packers don't win these next two games. Uh, Rodgers ain't coming back this year. Rick, I've agreed. I've said that all along, but crazier things have happened. We'll see. I'll tell you what, the way he was throwing the ball around on Sunday night made me kind of rethink that as far as his ability to come back. Now, obviously, it's one thing to be able to throw, one thing to put even velocity on the football. It's a whole other thing to take a hit. And I think that's a big reason why he was placed on IR is to kind of fight that temptation to bring him back too early. Because um, I'm sure maybe you guys have seen the headlines. If you haven't, make sure you go to PackersNews.com. We've got the video of Clay Matthews saying, 
you know, he's been in the re- he was in the rehab group last week because of his um, his injury, and he said, you know, Rogers looks amazing. We probably shouldn't have put him on IR. But I think one of the reasons Thompson did put him on IR was to fight this very urge. The well, he looks great. Uh, maybe we should, you know, err on the side of uh, getting him out there. You know, putting him on IR absolutely set them up for, you know, having to ensure that even though he can throw, um, they have to wait until it's the bone is fully healed. And uh, obviously, we won't really even know that until two weeks from now when they have to make the determination whether to bring him back or not. Um, talk is cheap. Whiskey costs money. That's, that's a fair observation, Michael. I like it. In fact, I will be uh, partaking in some whiskey as soon as I'm done here. Surprised we haven't extended Lindsley yet. Andrew, I agree somewhat. I know there was a report by CBS Sports uh, this summer that they had approached Lindsley about an, a contract extension, but I haven't heard anything since then. And I've done you know a little kind of asking around on that in that regard, and it's been all quiet on that front. I don't know how much Rogers' injury maybe puts everything on hold. Um, I wouldn't have thought it would have, but you never know. But I will be surprised if he hits free agency. Uh, I think they need him. I think he's proven to be a good player for them. Um, maybe he's not elite, but he's just uh, you know a notch below. He's a very good football player, uh, a guy who runs their offense very well there uh, from the center position. NFL Network projects the pack to have the edge over the Bucks. Do you agree? You know, Paul, I do. If only because the Buccaneers are really banged up up front on offense coming into this game. They've just placed two of their starters along the offensive line on injured reserve. Um, that should help the Packers, obviously, in this issue they continually have when it comes to getting to the quarterback. Um, but, you know, Jameis Winston, he, he is a talent. And I know he's not a big-time star yet, but that guy can sling the football, and he can make plays. And, uh, you know, the Packers, especially now with Demarius Randall on the injury report and Kevin King having not practiced so far this week, that doesn't bode well for your for your secondary, which has struggled even with those guys in there. So... Yeah, it's it, it, it's not a game they can take lightly, but I do believe the Packers should win it. Is Jamal Williams starting? Great question. Uh, McCarthy did indicate today that Aaron Jones was in the some guy. You know, he made up some term. I can't even remember what he said right now. Uh, but uh, it sounds like Aaron Jones has a good chance to play on Sunday. So I would think whoever the starter is, whether it is Williams or whether it's Jones, I think it'll be most likely a timeshare. And I feel like this is a fantasy football question. Matt, you are correct. Evans can go up and get it, too. That is absolutely right. Um, they're going to have to treat Evans much like they treated Antonio Brown for much of that game, and probably even more so. I mean, they're going to have to have a safety shaded his way pretty much all game. So what's the deal with Clay Matthews? Uh, it sounds like he has said that he will play on Sunday. He's declared himself good to go. So barring a setback, barring something happening, Maybe on Saturday, we've seen that pop up a few times over the years where they do these walkthrough slash uh, sprint through practices on Saturday afternoon, Saturday mornings, and then some new injury pops up. So, you know, outside of that, because he didn't pop up on today's injury report, um, other than that he, he was on it and a full participant, um, you know, barring a setback, he should be good to go. Oh, and Clay is done, LOL. He's done being the player he was, there's no doubt about that, but he's not done as a football player, not done as a contributor. Anyone who watches the tape can tell you that. Um, any student of the game will tell you that he is affecting offenses. Now, he is not putting up big uh, sack numbers. There's no, about, no doubt about that. And he, that's what he gets paid to do. Um, I won't be surprised at all if they ask him to take a pay cut this summer. But um, he is still an asset on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, going to my first Packers game this week in Go Pack Go. Travis, I hope you have a great time. Lambeau is the best place to see a football game. No doubt about that. Could Ty Montgomery make a good runner for punts and kickoffs? Well, they did try Montgomery on kickoffs um, his rookie year, and even last year, I think. Maybe even this I, did they? I think he may have even been this summer. Um, but it was never, I didn't ever feel like he was a, really comfortable with it. Um, I haven't really felt like any other guys are comfortable with it, whether it's Davis, whether it's Janice, whether it's Montgomery. They haven't really had a great natural returner in a while. Hello from Anchorage, Alaska. Christopher, how are you? Thanks for joining. James, OSU versus Wisconsin. You bet I'm going to be watching it on Saturday night. It's going to be good stuff. Cobb on punts. Matt, I would think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, every time Davis is back there, it seems to be an adventure. His, uh, his decision-making is suspect, to say the least. I would think you'd want sure-handed Cobb back there. 
Um, but for whatever reason, I think they really are desperate to break one, to make a play at some point. I really think maybe even the uh, residual kind of imagery of uh, Davis bringing back that very first punt in the preseason back for a touchdown, it's like they just got that little taste and now they're just trying to recapture it all season long. I don't know. What's Ty's best position? Good question, Peter. I would third down back. I think is his best position. I think I don't think he's built or made up to be a down in, down out, early down running back. But I do think on third downs he can be le he can be a lethal weapon in this offense. Um, simply because he can do so much, and wherever they deploy him, they put him in motion. He really dictates coverages, makes defenses kind of declare what they're doing in a way that he can actually be utilized. Like sometimes a lot of that is window dressing. You've seen that a couple times this past few weeks where they've split out Williams or Jones, and you know they're not throwing out there on a dare, you know? But you throw a William, um, Ty Montgomery out there, they may throw the ball over there. You know, Ty Montgomery can make stuff happen on the perimeter. So that's a position, obviously, that he was drafted in, a wide receiver. He knows everything out there. He knows as far as the checks and the adjustments to coverage off the line of scrimmage and things of that nature. He's a viable weapon. Whereas, you know, you throw Jones out there or Williams or Eddie Lacy back in the day. There was a great shot last year of Eddie Lacy. He got split out wide and he had to run a nine route and he like half jogged it. It's like you, even the, you, everyone, the defense knows that he's not throwing it over there. Um, but with Ty Montgomery, you don't know. He could be doing anything. So I think third down uh, back is kind of his niche and where he should be used the most once he's come once he comes back. But... Uh, he didn't practice again today, and I can't imagine he's going to play on Sunday, so there's no telling when he'll be back. Pack runs the table, part two. Rodgers returns and NFC teams. Jaws drop. Um, it's possible. Let's see him beat the Bucks first. I mean, everyone's talking about this, you know, they got to win five games. Like, it's like, oh, it's nothing. They've won one game since Rodgers went down. So uh, let's see him, A, win a game, and then B, win two in a row before we start talking about run the table. Does Ted go back to the free agency this offseason? Alex, I, I can't imagine he doesn't. Um, now, I know he's never going to be as active as people, fans, want him to be. But I thought I think they've made some good gains this season, despite and besides the you know debacle that was Martellus Bennett and the decision to let Jared Cook walk. But Jahari Evans has been low-key one of the best signings of the offseason around the league. Um, I think you look at Quinton Dial and Ahmad Brooks especially, injuries have obviously played a part about maybe their lack of production and their lack of effectiveness, but Brooks has played well. He played pretty well on Sunday night. Um, and those were, have been good additions. Uh, like I said, obviously Thompson's never going to go hog wild in free agency. It's not his style. It's not what he believes in. But I got to think that you know they, they, they hit on some things this offseason. And if he can augment his draft class once again, um, it makes a lot of sense. Perry got to step up, should dominate this week. Cody, uh, you would think so. He, he has made his hay against lesser ta tackles. Um, yeah, he really needs to, to bring it because they're going to need pressure to help their secondary this this, this weekend. Ahmad Brooks does all these savvy vet things. Love his play. Matt, I agree. I, I think he's been a real good addition. Uh, better pass rush equals better secondary. Mitchell, I agree. Can we make Ted a free agent? Joe, not yet. Uh, I would tend to think after the 2018 season, as Murphy has said all along. Why doesn't Ted Thompson address the pass rush? I think he thinks he probably has by, you know, doing things like signing Nick Perry and then going getting Ahmad Brooks at the last minute. It's just unfortunate that Ahmad Brooks came up with this back condition that hadn't hampered him at all during his entire season where he hadn't missed any games. And now the first games he misses in his career are in Green Bay, of course, to add fuel to the the Packers are so injured, more injured than everybody else chorus that we get to hear day in and day out. Um, but, you know, I think he thinks he has. Now, and, and to be fair, it's not like he paid Nick Perry prime pass rushing money. I mean, he paid him a lot of money, but he didn't pay him like Von Miller money for good reason. He's nowhere near Von Miller's status or ability uh, as a player. But he did pay him. And he did pay him a good chunk of change. And it's not like he's been... A, very productive outside of obviously he had a three sack game and that that has to be counted um but two of those were coverage sacks i mean you talk about the secondary needing a pass rush well this pass rush seems to need the secondary more than the secondary needs them that's not how you want to play 
Uh, ESPN article uh, lists the Packers as the most injured team this year. I agree. Uh, they have lost a lot to injury. When I'm addressing the idea that the Packers are the most injured, threat, it's the idea that they're always the most injured. They weren't last year. They were like right in the middle of the pack. Yet coming into this year, all I heard was, oh, they're always the most injured. No, that's just not even close to the truth. This year, yes, they have been quite injured, and they have lost a lot to injury. There's no doubt about it, starting with, obviously, Aaron Rodgers, but um, across the board, they have been hit hard. Uh, where's Beagle and Montrevious Adams? Uh, Beagle played extensively um, a couple weeks ago. He didn't uh, play a ton on Sunday night because Ahmad um, Brooks was in there. But uh, and Montrevious Adams, I think he's just a redshirt year. I think that's why we've seen him... Uh, you know, shelved so often on game day, even when he was healthy. I just think he missed the entire off season or the entire camp. Basically didn't get to do any work because of that injury, the foot injury. Um, you know, he remember he was injured like the day, the first day in pads was his first day on the injury report. So yeah, he missed the entire kind of work that they did in the off season. And once, you know, he was healthy, it was halfway through the year and you can't take time to bring this guy along and spoon feed, spoon feed him in the middle of the season. So I think they've chalked it up to they're going to redshirt him this year and they'll bring him back, get him in the offseason program, get him in the weight room, bring him in full bear next season and see what he's got. Should have drafted T.J. Watt. Rick, it's way too early to say that. Sorry, man. They're like, what, 11 games into their careers? I mean... Should have drafted T.J. Watt over drafting Kevin King and Vince Beagle, which is what the Packers netted by trading back. Way, 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 way too early to say that. Come back in three years and then talk to me. How does Ted Thompson's work get evaluated in the offseason? Paul, that's a really, really good question. I don't have a solid answer for you because the only one who evaluates his work is Mark Murphy. And the only comments Murphy's ever made publicly are... You know, I think Ted's doing a great job, um, and I know people, fans, want to, you know, call for heads and want action, but uh, more often than not, and I'm paraphrasing here, obviously, more often than not, um, you know, they do a good job of getting us out of whatever. And I'm always like, well, yeah, but they got you into whatever. Wouldn't it be nice to not get into whatever? Um, but... Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what criteria Murphy is using. I mean, it's so rare that we get to speak to him about football matters. Whenever he does make public appearances, it's mostly like, you know, he's breaking ground on some title town thing or something. Uh, but that's a good question. And it's something I may ask him at the owners meeting this, uh, this spring. Because it is kind of something that he's never really talked about as far as what his criteria, what criteria he's using to judge him. How does Murphy know so much about football and GMs? Well, okay, he played football for the Washington Redskins. He was a safety. Um, as far as like knowing about general managers, I'm not so sure he does. Um, what's funny about Murphy, sorry, I'm getting alerts on my phone here. What's funny about Murphy is he's never really had to make a football decision since he's been in this position in Green Bay. You know, he was hired, he was recommended by a search firm when, when they were looking for a president um, after the near disaster with John Jones. Um, you know, and he was recommended, and they hired him, and, you know, Ted Thompson was already there, uh, McCarthy was in place, Favre was there. The Favre thing he had to deal with, you know, and he famously went down to Mississippi with a $20 million offer, and that became a big story, and that kind of got an egg on his face there. So he did kind of have to shepherd the, the team through that, and he was new on the job, and that's a tough spot. So it's not like he has been totally free of, you know, I guess, a presence on the football side, but he had, everything was there when he arrived on the scene. So this kind of turning point in the franchise at, in, after the 2018 season, it's a big, big moment for Mark Murphy. Because whatever he ends up doing, whether he hires a new general manager, whether he promotes from within, um, you know, whatever he does, is that's going to have a big-time ripple effect. Because whoever that new general manager is, you got to think they're going to want their own coach. Any true GM worth their salt would want that. Or will he, will Murphy go looking for someone who can work with McCarthy? Does Murphy deem, I want to keep McCarthy? These are all, you know, questions, things that are up in the air that we don't know. We don't know Murphy's thoughts on, on these subjects. So it's a huge moment, and it will probably define his legacy. I mean, Titletown notwithstanding, that's great. That probably would have happened 
in some form or another, maybe not exactly as it's happening right now, but the way forward in the NFL is to, you know, generate revenue outside of what needs to be shared with the league. And that's what title town is all about generating revenue that the Packers get to keep. Um, so that was going to happen that something along those lines, something along the lines of title town was going to happen. But football wise and the direction of the franchise and keeping them a viable entity in the NFL and winning and all the things that come with winning, he hasn't had to do much in that regard. And this decision that he's going to make in a year and a half, yep, it's going to be huge. And it's going to determine the fate of the franchise going forward. Pretty huge. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned in that regard. KGB or Matthews, Dustin? Matthews, easily. I mean, KGB was a good player, but he was not the game changer Matthews is. And uh, much like Matthews, KGB got overpaid as well because they were desperate and they didn't want to lose him to Philly. Will Clark return this year? Yes, I believe he'll play on Sunday, actually. It sure sounds like it, and which I'm kind of shocked about because a high ankle sprain traditionally has kept guys out for a really long time. But it sounds like uh, it wasn't quite as bad as they had initially feared. And uh, he's talking, and he's been limited in practice, but he's talking like he's going to play on Sunday. So we'll see. Does Leroy Butler make the Hall of Fame? Oh, I doubt it. I really want him to. I think it's an absolute travesty that he's not in there. He completely deserves it. It's it's a farce that he's not in, and it's absurd it's taken this long to even make semifinalist. But I doubt it. I mean, you know, those people in the room, they all have agendas. And Butler doesn't have a, like a real forceful kind of cheerleader to push him, uh, push his nomination in the room. And I just think he played at a time when, and at a position where it's going to be really hard. It's just going to, it's going to be tough to make that case and to get him in over some other bigger names. So, yeah, I really hope he does. He totally deserves it, but um, I'll, I will be very surprised if that happens. Scott, Kenny Clark update? I just talked about him. Uh, he should play Sunday. Thoughts on Randall's season? Peter, I tell you what, it totally, totally turned around when he got benched against Chicago. And people wanted to give McCarthy crap for that. And understandably at the time, I understand, I, you know, it looked absurd, but s sure worked. I mean, is he Deion Sanders in his prime? Not even close. But he's been productive. Uh, he's, his coverage has improved. His tackling has improved. Uh, he's given up a play here or there, but he's always been in position. It's not like he's getting, you know, burn to the degree that he had been, especially last year, his play has really stepped up. And it is and it is absolutely, you can draw a line straight to his getting benched against Chicago on that Thursday night. So I tell you what, man, if, if they can keep, you know, keep him on that path, they may actually salvage that draft pick. When are the owners going to start suspending without pay for squatting? I'm not quite sure I understand the question. Will Jerry Kramer make the Hall of Fame? Georgia, I think so. I think this is his year. Don't hold me to it, but I think it. That's what I think. I think he's in. But we'll see. I say that now, and I'll watch him not get in. But uh, uh, I interviewed him recently for a um, uh, thing we're doing for the Ice Bowl here at Packers News. And, you know, we as he was leaving, we mentioned, you know, good luck with the Hall of Fame. He's like, look, I'm here. It was the weekend that all the Ice Bowl guys had gathered at Lambeau. He said, look, I'm here to hang out with my boys. We're going to have some fun. I'm not even thinking about that. If I get that call, then, and this is exactly what he said. He looked right at me. He said, then we'll party. <laughs> it was great. Um, so, yeah, I, I really hope he, I hope, I hope this is it. I really, can you imagine, I said this on Twitter the other day. Can you imagine if both of them get in? If both Leroy Butler and Jerry Kramer make the Hall of Fame in the same year? Burn it down, man. It'd be crazy. Any chance Herb Waters can be the next Sam Shields? An outside chance. I know uh, uh, Joe Witt Jr. really talked him up this summer. Uh, we didn't get a chance to really see much of him prior to his getting injured and put on the injured reserve. But, uh, you know, the, the, the athletic ability is certainly there. And uh, Joe Witt certainly seems to think he has the ability. So we'll see. I think Pagano could be our next defensive coordinator. Um, I don't know. I don't think he and McCarthy have any connections that I remember, but I guess it's not impossible. But I would tend to doubt it. Uh, which player has surprised you the most so far this season? Oh, good question. Gotta, it's got to be Blake Martinez. Um, I guess that sounds like a cop-out, but it's true. I didn't expect any of this from him. 
Uh, watching him last year and even this summer, I didn't think much of his play. I didn't think much of his prospects. And he has absolutely proven me wrong. He, he has absolutely come alive at that inside linebacker spot. And look, is he Ray Nitschke? Is he Mike Singletary? Is he Luke Keekley? No. Uh, but he's athletic. He does a great job of getting through the wash and making tackles. And yes, sometimes they're downfield. Sometimes they're behind the line of scrimmage. Sometimes he gets blocked by your interior lineman. Sometimes he knifes through and makes a tackle. But the guy is so active. He goes sideline to sideline. He's learning the NFL game much faster than I thought he would. Um, and the guy makes plays. And that's what you need. So, yeah, I, I understand there are people who are, are you know, down on Martinez for a number of different reasons. And I get, I get most of those complaints. But I tell you what, he's so much better than I expected him to be. Can you send out an autograph pic of you and Raji? No one wants that. Uh, rate AJ Hawk's career out of 10. I say 5. Nah, I'd give him at least a 7. Got to watch out for OJ Howard. I agree. Uh, he's a talent. He's been really up and down, but that's to be expected with rookies at the tight end position. It always takes a year or two uh, for guys to acclimate to the NFL there because they're asked to do so much. Um, but he is talented, and he can hurt you. There's no doubt about that. Let's see. Raji, new defensive coordinator next year. I doubt it. But the Raji mentions let me know that it's time to go. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to your question. They do fly by really fast. Um, but make sure you're checking out PackersNews.com for all the latest. My latest podcast just went up this afternoon, so make sure you check that out. Uh, as well as the conversation I had with Greg Owlman of the Tampa Bay Times. He gives us the perspective of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Get some of your Bucks questions answered for you. Um, and everything else. Make sure you're checking PackersNews.com from now right up until kickoff on Sunday. Until then, talk to you later.